Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another video. We've got quite a challenging case here and it's very interesting because again we're going to do a before and after video. So the first half of this video you're going to see me working through this very thick dry sticky wax which is um, unfortunately the worst of consistencies. In other words it's not quite hard enough such that you can drag it out all in one big boulder with a hook or a suction. Um, it's not quite soft enough to pull apart um, in chunks or, or draw straight through the suction probe. So it's just something that you just have to be patient with and work away at it. So we're going to loosen all this up with some olive oil and you know make as much progress as we can. But ultimately on this first consultation we don't succeed. And what I did was I told the patient to apply uh, a lot of olive oil as much as they could manage over three days and then come back and see me. So you'll see today's appointment and then you'll see the same ear, the same patient, but three days later and you'll see exactly what the effect was of that olive oil in the process. So here we can see quite a, a dark image. This wax is very, very, it's almost black. It's like tar. Uh, so it's had plenty of time to oxidize, plenty of time to firm up. And there is some hair uh, mixed in with the wax, but not too much. I don't think that's necessarily the, the root cause of the issue. And I've applied some olive oil just to help kind of loosen everything up to lubricate the ear canal. But again, this is really going to take some, uh, some patience here. So going back in with the regular suction probe here. And again, I'm just trying to catch it from the side. Just try any, any technique, technique really just to strip away these layers. And Again, just trying from the side here. And again, the suction machine at this point was cranked up fairly high. I mean, the, the suction machine that I use, um, you know, if I crank it up really, really high, it tends to kind of hover around minus 500 millimeters of mercury. So, you know, it's a fairly powerful machine, but even so, even with all that power, um, it is still struggling. So, and you may be thinking at this point, okay, well, why not, you know, shove a Jobson horn in? Why not shove a hook in or a Rosen insert or anything like that. And the problem with these cases, as is always the case with these type of, you know, impactions and these, these walls of wax, is that it's very, very difficult to judge the depth sometimes, uh, which is, you know, possibly a downside of using an, using an endoscope rather than a microscope, is that it's very difficult to judge the depth perception. And it's something that you learn over time. So the more you use an endoscope, the more you kind of get a feel for it. Um, but having said that, no amount of experience, no amount of training can really substitute for direct vision. In other words, looking down the eyepieces of a, a microscope um, or loops, so what, um, you know, dentistry loops or surgical loops to get that direct vision and actually seeing with your eyes, you know, because then you get true depth perception. Um, and that's, so these cases would probably be a little bit easier with, uh, with an ENT microscope, like an operating microscope. Um, but, you know, we have the endoscope here. Uh, I do have loops, actually. I have a couple of sets of loops. Um, so they're like, they're like glasses, but with um, magnification lenses um, that, are, that are over your eyes. So um, the type of thing that a, that a dentist would use, basically, if they want to get a real close-up image of your teeth. Um, and I do have them, but again, the, it just, the vision is not as good as an endoscope. Um, so here I'm doing some work very deep in the ear canal. And the problem is, is that I'm fairly sure at this point, right in the center of the frame there, you can see some wax. And I'm fairly sure that the eardrum is right on the other side of that. And, you know, in these cases, I'm always starting to get a little bit cautious because what I don't want to do is kind of, you know, be a bit aggressive with the suction and actually, you know, do some damage to the eardrum, which is lurking right behind that layer of wax. So right there is where I think it is. And I'm just probing very, very gently. Now at this particular point, the patient was finding my probing and poking just a little bit uncomfortable. So now we have three days after copious amounts of olive oil, according to the patient. And here we see a window through to the eardrum. So right where that white arrow was, that is the eardrum. That sort of bluish, shiny, pinkish uh, skin back there is the window. And you can see all the bubbles here that are formed. So, I mean, the, according to the patient, they had used just a huge amount of olive oil, which is what I wanted really. 
and they came to the clinic feeling like their hearing was actually pretty good. And I'm not surprised because, to be quite honest, the olive oil has done most of the work for us, really. So, I, you know, looking at this, it's pretty good. There isn't necessarily a problem per se, because the eardrum is back there, it's intact. So what we're doing now is we're going to clean up as much of this residual wax as possible um, to make sure that it doesn't obviously fall back against the eardrum when they go for a shower. You know, last thing we want to do is to put their head in the bath or tilt their head in the shower and for all that wax to kind of just travel back down and slime up against the eardrum. Um, so we're just going to do, this is more of a clean up job, a preventative measure at this point. And we're not going to be able to get all of this residual wax. But what we want to do is just get as much of it as possible, perhaps leave the patient with a nice smearing on the ear canal um, to, to protect them from infection uh, and to leave them feeling nice and comfortable. And again, just look at how easy now the wax is to hoover up. Such a difference from the first consultation where we were dealing with, you know, very tough kind of molasses, chewing gum kind of consistency, tar, and now it's just as easy as anything. And funnily enough, the reason that I always uh, advise olive oil between consultations rather than sodium bicarb or hydrogen peroxide is that in my experience, whenever I've recommended sodium bicarb, I never recommend hydrogen peroxide because I think it's just, it, it leads to a lot of irritation. But whenever I have advised sodium bicarb, what I usually see is that after aggressive usage, the remaining wax that's in the ear kind of liquefies and then just, you know, goes right down to the eardrum and slicks up against the eardrum. I don't find that with olive oil. I actually find that when people have used olive oil, the wax actually tends to move forwards a little bit. So it tends to move laterally or outward a little bit. Um, I thought this was a brilliant case of, of just how well it works. So you can see just mopping up the sides here. Now again, the, the problem with this is that you never want to apply too much pressure when you're this deep in the ear canal. I mean, it is extremely well innovated and um, it doesn't take too much to make the patient jump out of their chair if you just apply too much pressure as you're trying to kind of hoover up the slime and uh, you, know, you can make them jump and it can be very uncomfortable. Um, so again, just hoovering up on the roof of the ear canal here. And again, we really just don't want to put too much pressure on the canal walls at all at this point. But you can see a much clearer eardrum now. It looks a little inflamed actually. So around the handle of the malleus, it looks a little red. So typically this is a, a right ear. And we know that because the handle of the malleus is pointing to the right. It's at about two o'clock or maybe one o'clock in this image. So you see that little white spot, that little white ball on the eardrum. So that is the handle of the malleus. That's the top part of it or the lateral process of it. So it's usually like a stick with a ball on the end that's kind of just poking out of the eardrum. Um, and it looks a little red around there, but uh, I mean, I'm sure that will recover with time. It's not surprising actually, given just how much the, the patient has gone through um, regarding this wax blockage. This is a rather interesting tool, which I don't feature heavily at all really. So it's a, a curved fine end. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to use it just to hoover up some of this remaining debris. But again, it's, it's very difficult to use. And um, just here, actually, applying just a little bit too much pressure, patient found that uncomfortable. So going in there, you, there's no bleeding or anything, but you can understand why, you know, it, if you apply too much pressure with that, with that curved point, um, it can be uncomfortable. So um, again, I, I very rarely use that. Um, it's one of those tools that you have if you need it, but you know, for the most part, it's just very limited use. So there we go, lovely looking eardrum back there. We weren't able to clear all of it, but again, we've made a huge, huge difference compared to the first consultation. So there we go, I hope you found that video interesting. I thought it was a good example of how olive oil can be super, super effective, even in just three days. That is a remarkable, remarkable outcome there. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all your comments. I appreciate you subscribing and I will see you guys on the next video.